Oh, shalom, Rastafari. This is one of them and again. This will be the part two on the Hashem, the Rastafari Hashem. And I just was thinking that, you know, we wanted to touch on this and, and kind of like write and produce certain works that others can follow up on or ones can disagree. But if you're going to disagree, bring forth evidence. You know what I'm saying? Bring bring forth some evidence or some proof or make a, you know, this one get angry and upset like, uh, what Leonard Jeffries, when he used to kept coming to Brooklyn College a couple of times, we had him back when he said Black History Month and the whole thing about, you know, um, black studies and um, Africa. So he was like, don't don't get mad, get glad. Don't be, you know, don't be upset, be prepared. You know what I mean? So don't get mad, get glad. Don't be upset, be prepared. So whenever someone would come up, like they had a lot of the Jews, the European Jews, the other Jews, they would get up and try to say that what the good teacher was teaching, you understand, somehow was somehow was racist. And what he would say to them, well, actually got to the point that we started to say it, you know, so it's like when somebody would be like, hey, you say such and such, and he was like, what do we say? You know, and we, and he'll start it off like a chorus. Don't get mad, get glad. You understand? Um, like don't be be the angry or whatever like that. Be prepared. You know, like be prepared. You know, just don't say, oh, this is wrong, such and such. And a lot of folks need to listen to that particular advice. So, mm, why does the name the Hashem really matter? You understand? Well, the Hashem is the revelation. You know what I'm saying? It's not just that somebody's going to have a particular name. Remember, Yahweh's name, right? We say Yahweh. Yahweh is a name, but it's more or less expression of who he is, right? He be who he be. In other words, he becomes or manifests himself in whatever um, way or through whatever means to fulfill his word. And we see in the life and in the the example and in the word, words and the work of the King of Kings. We see that manifestation, that revelation of God in Christ in these latter days and time. Um, whether it's so simple to, to say he's God from a Western white Gentile perspective, many of us are coming to the level as we're studying that, um, we, we back away from that. In other words, we, we, we kind of, because that's like going off, off a deep end, you know, the whole word God and Gad. He, his majesty is not Bal Gad. That's your pope. Your pope is Bal Gad. He, he's your Lord God. You know what I'm Because the God of this world is the devil. So we have to really recognize these things as we move forward. True, the previous generation, the first reveals of Rastafari, we get it. You understand that that was that was the 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 understanding or overstanding of that time, and in spirit and in truth, it was much more grounded than what we see going on today. Even though now we probably are more materially, you know, we peoples have more you know money and ability to do things, but we don't have that those those core elements. You understand those core ingredients now. Let us um, just touch on right here. We was in Timothy talking about the Pope thing earlier, and um, hopefully we, 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 we would just kind of like just sum up that and show some of the basic evidence that some of those pages on the YouTubes are still, you know, the YouTube, they have all these little nanobots and programs that if you leave it there too long, it starts fragging out, flipping out. You overs. But um, so... Uh, where are we? We're going to go to Timothy, right? First Timothy. First Timothy. This is interesting, this chapter right here, right? This chapter right here, um, Timothy, First Timothy chapter 6, the part you remember when we talked about for the love of money is the root of all evil, right? And it says, while, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, we know that this is, the exact thing that has happened both to us, right, as the children of Israel here in the diaspora, the lost sheep, as well as the children of the Ethiopians, as well as the Ethiopia circa the creeping coup time. And thus we have this particular book here that we had noted before, the betrayal of Ethiopia, right, um, how they... Um, um, how they bit the hand of the one who fed them, 
you understand, speaking about um, both the enemies, the internal enemies, right, as well as the external enemies. And we touched on the first part, JFK, continuing on that particular um, study in Revelation, right? But the betrayal of Ethiopia from within and from without, all right? They could never, in order to betray Yeshua HaMoshiach until they found uh, Askarotawi, until they found uh, 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 Iscariot, right? Um, so, here we have, next verse it says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. And we see within the revelation of Negus and Neges, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, that he who be who he be would do this very thing, after that careless and that creeping coup, you understand, as a man of God. And what is God? God is the spirit of truth, that he too would flee these things, right, that he too would flee these things, right, and follow after that which is, of that which is, 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 is of God, of the spirit and the truth. And remember we touched on that Sirach, that was Sirach 11 and 5. Many kings have sat down upon the ground. And one that was never thought of hath won the crown. Or Bamarinya, it says, Bezi, Alem, Bemekra, Yewedeku, Mekwanent, Bezunacho, Zod, Yete, Kedaje, Bahitawim, Alle. It says, um, In this world, many nobles have fallen in tribulation or troubled times. Right, and there is a crown wearing by Hitawi, a Nazarite, Nazarene, dreadlock one, who has gained the crown of favor or mogus by way of success or coming out ahead. All right, coming out ahead. So, this is a, a testimony. This is from this particular document here, the Sakata Yeses. You can order this. Um, this is the English one, uh, a raw translation interpretation provided by um, N.A. Rasia Dinos Teferi, Wendem Yadin. So this is available now for the brothers and sisters who've been asking about it. Check it out at the um, Lion of Judah, or L.O.J. Society, um, dot O.R.G. On the, on the books page. But let's go on with this. So fight the fight of, fight the good fight of faith, of the Hymenos. Lay hold on eternal life. Where too thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So there should be no doubt that Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, or the Hashem. See, this is what we have to understand. Why the Hashem? Why would we say Hashem? Because when we look at the fullness of his majesty, um, the fullness of his name, right, or his, what's known as the, the throne name, right, really, really the the seal name, right? Let's take this off right now. Yeah, the seal name right there, the praenomen, right? Moan Desa Zem Negeri Yehuda, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, Siyume Xavier, Negusa Neges Ze Ethiopia. So every time we said his, his Hashem, we would have to say this. You understand? And this is why even in Ethiopia, Garmawi Hoy or John Hoy, you understand? or other such expressions so that we all know who we are speaking of, and we are speaking of that one, you understand, and concerning that one with um, um, honor, kubr, you understand, honor, as, as, as honorable, you understand, as honorable and not dishonorably. And I'm saying to the, my Rastafari brothers and sisters that many of us, through ignorance, as, as Hawaii Apollo he even says, yes, I did these things, but in ignorance, right? I did these things not knowing. I did these things in ignorance. Mm -hmm. And many of us have done these things in ignorance. But it's, um, in fact, let's just go here. Let's just go here on this right here just so that you can, um, let's go to the Blue Letter Bible. I want you to understand this right here, give you at least a scripture for it, and also show you this is kind of the process that, that you, should, you should also try to study 
you know, and, and show yourself approved. Um, ignorance, right? Let's look up ignorance, right? Ignorance. You want to get over ignorance? Study it from the Bible, and, and you'll see the way out of it. Wait, okay, he uh, winked. I think it's winked. So this, this study thing, you have to have, like, exact words. And, yeah, one verse right here. This is Acts 17.30. And the times of this ignorance, God... He winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. So Acts 17.30, right? And then Paul said he done these things in ignorance, right? This is also a word, too. He done these things in ignorance. He, he, he didn't know. Well, we have it from Old Testament to New Testament. Where does Paul say um, about when he's speaking about um, um, in ignorance? Um, um, let's see, in ignorance, um, because the blindness of you, okay, it puts them in, perhaps I'm looking at it from the, from the Amharic, right? And I have to just recall what the English of it was, right? Um, yeah, in fact, look at Acts 3 and 17. And now, brethren, um, I wot that through ignorance ye did it. In other words, when we speak to the Ethiopians, we, we should recognize that in ignorance, them and their ancestors did it. True, there's probably some who knew full well, but woe to their soul, right? Did it, as did also your rulers, right? Those who were responsible. You understand those who were responsible and those who should have shown um, some sort of responsibility. Um, yeah, and Ephesians 4 and 18, look at that. Having the understanding darkened, the understanding was darkened, right? Being alienated from the life of God. You know, they, they went to church and, and, and they had godly names, but they were alienated. They were aliens to the liberty, to living it through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. They can see with their eyes, but their heart, right? But their heart was, their heart was blinded. Now, that, um, yeah, he, I, I did these, uh, what he says, I did these things, I did these things not knowing. I think that's in the scripture, um, not knowing, uh, though there's probably a lot of places in the scripture with not knowing, um, but I'll put did. Let's see. This is what I do. Okay, it didn't, it didn't come up like that. Let me take out did, right? Yeah, because this, this, this search right here is kind of very, very exact. Okay, 15, 15. I could, could waddle through 15, um, 15 of these. Let's see. Not knowing, not knowing. I think it's what it says a true and a faithful saying. You understand? A true and a faithful um, saying is that verse there. True and a faithful saying. So as I and I teach, we also trying to practice too. True and a, a worthy of all acceptation. Acceptation. Let me get that verse. And I think it's in the very same chapter that this is found right here. All right. Um, um, let's see. This true and okay. Here we go. Four. Four and nine, right? Four and nine, right? Let's see. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. Um, let's see. Trying a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to get that verse. You know, I'm going to get that verse. Got to, you know, because this is, some people might be in the back saying, oh, duh, such and such. Oh, this is the first one. Okay, it does just stop right here. Okay, yeah, here it goes right here. Here it goes right here. And let me just bring this in bold right here. Um, so you see it right here. It says, this is um, 1 uh, Timothy 1 and 15. This is a faithful saying. This is a saying that you should have faith in. Not all those, those people say, people say. Who are the people? You don't even know them. You don't even know how their sayings worked out in their own life. All right, but we testify. Uh -huh. All right, excuse me. This is a faithful saying. 
and worthy of all acceptation. That Christos Jesus, that the Moshiach, Yeshua, came into the world to save Hatiatenio, sinners, of whom I am chief. So each of us has to, when you get to the maturity that you're not reading that Paul is saying this, but you are saying this, then you're coming to a level of, of gnosis, of true knowledge of the Son of God, of the Bain Ha Elohim. Not the bar, but the Bain, actually. Preacher out there that's saying bar, bar, bar. I, I understand where he's coming from, but really he should check out the Hebrews. Bain Ha Elohim. There's a bar, Jesus, but that was, a, he was a sorcerer or somebody like that, a Caesar Borgias kind of guy, right? How be it for this cause I obtain mercy. That in me first, Jesus Christos might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter my men or believe on him to life everlasting. Right? And I think he says that, and that he had did these things. But yeah, here we go. Ignorantly. That, that's it right there. Ignorantly. This is, this is, this is. I look up ignorance, where he says right here, and I thank Christos Jesus, our Adonai, or I thank the Moshiach Yeshua Adonenu, Christos Jesus Getachin, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Now some say, oh, Paul was not a true apostle, so forth, so forth. all those all their so-called evidence has fallen flat on his face. You understand? And really, they are the false ones. The overs, and some of us recognize why there is this big fight against Hawaii Apollos. If anything, it should be against all your Pope Pauls. They're the fake Pauls. They're, they're the lying apostles. All right? Not our, our Hebrew brother, our Benjamite brother here. But it says, oh, but he was. He was a, a bad guy. He says, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, actually a prosecutor, right, for the Pharisees, a, a, a prosecutor or persecutor, an injurious, all right? Don't think he was any kind of a punk out there. He was like gangster for the Pharisees, right? But I obtained mercy because I did it in unbelief. I did it ignorantly in unbelief, right? He did it ignorantly without the amen. And the grace of Adonenu, of our Lord, was exceeding, was very abundant with faith and love, which is in the Moshiach, Yeshua. So this is the area that, um, you know, that I was, I was looking for, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy um, um, verses from verse 12. But check out the whole, the, whole, uh, the whole epistle and the other epistles there too, they alike. All right. So let us um, go forward with the Hashem. So where were we and, and, and why are we speaking on the Hashem? Why is the Hashem and the Adoshem important? So the first part was kind of getting into it. So check out the first part. This will be the continuance. I don't know how many of you all saw this book before. Right? How many of you all saw this book, National Sunday Law? A shocking glimpse behind the scenes, National Sunday Law. Um, the Forces Unite Amid Stupendous Crisis by A. Jan Markison, right? This particular book right here. It says, A stupendous crisis awaits us. The book you have in your hand takes you behind the scenes, right, and explores the shocking who, how, and when, right? And this particular book right here, right? Now, the reason why, now this connects with the Pope and what they're seeking to do and what still might be done. We understand, in fact, things are even lining up more now where we might see some of this um, manifestation. Well, this book was interesting to me because I'm going to show you the page. I don't know if this is the one that has, has, has my original notes in it, right? But um, I was reading this years ago, and I found, you know, opportunity to kind of refer to this particular book, and it talks about the name, right? It talks about the name and it's connecting the seal and the Sabbath and the name of God and what is a seal. And it, it, it inspired some of the further research that we have done 
at some of the presentation that we have made. Let me see if it's if it's in here. Okay, here it goes right here. I'm gonna have to take that out. Okay, here we go. Excuse my handwriting, but this this was written some years ago, right? Mm-hmm. It says, first of all, what is God's seal, right? It says a seal, like a machetem, right, is something having to do with legal affairs or that which is lawful. Like when we say his majesty is earth's rightful ruler. You understand? It says Adam, right, was to be earth's rightful ruler and because of the jealousy against Adam, you understand, basically Satan and the fallen angels fell you know, because they did not want to bow to that God man Adam, just like this this so called world order, right? Don't want to bow to the King of Kings. You know what I'm saying? But present a counterfeit. So a law, right? A law is stamped with the seal, right? With the seal of the ruling government, the the, the rightful government. Remember, seventy two nations, right, bowed to this man, bowed to Kedamawi Haile Selassie. All right. Now, there's a bigger significance to that, a prophetical significance as well in number 70 and 72, right? So it says a seal has three parts. You see that right there? A seal has three parts. The first part is the name of the ruler. So we have Haile Selassie I or Haile Selassie I, right? Then it says the ruler's title. So what's the ruler's title? King of Kings, Emperor. See, Emperor, they like to say Emperor Selassie. And then a lot of y'all then say Emperor Selassie because New York Times or some writers, some Babylonian writers say New York Times too. So you're sharing in their era and you're calling yourself children and you're saying the very, you're not saying any better. It says that the demons, right, know there's one God and they tremble. What more do you do, old man? All right, so the ruler's title is Nagusa Nagas, right? Nagusa Nagas Ze Ethiopia. Because if you look at some German programs, German programs refer to his majesty as Kaiser, right? We know he's not Caesar, but they call him Kaiser because Caesar or Kaiser or Tsar is how they refer to their um, Gentile rulers. So they don't have these sort of terminologies, and so they're not really fully reflecting our roots. This is why we have to study our roots so we know the truth, right, um, and be a good fruit. Thirdly, it's the territory over which he rules. And we said Ethiopia, and then we put Zion, right, Zion. Now, it says when the government seal is on a law or on currency, right, it is official. The whole loyal nation stands behind it. God's seal makes his law official, and the whole loyal universe stands behind it. In fact, that part there might be an explanation to why they're seeing so many um, kinds of extraterrestrials and there's so much heavenly activity. You know what I'm saying? Because what have these people done down here? You know what I'm saying? Don't they know? Yobas, <laughs> the angels, the powers, the dominions which haven't fallen, they recognize, and man would not recognize. That's why, that's why the psalm writer says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? You know what I'm saying? And the son of man. You, you know what I mean? I mean, what is man? I mean, I mean, even even they wonder, like, you know, why is the Almighty so um, merciful with us and has sent us such grace and such opportunity? You know, and this is why this particular picture here is interesting right here of his imperial majesty in front of the chapel. Hail Selassie is the chapel, right? Uh, right, the Sicari Jesus, the explication of of Jesus or Jesus, the Rastafari way, Jesus, you know, in, in J S U S, sus, like sustainer, right? Um, so you see, there's some heavenly warfare going on, right? In the in the in the foreground, the heavenly, and you see His Majesty there in His uh, coronation robes, all right. So and you see the line of Judah out front, all right. So it's very interesting if you look at the whole. Right, the whole picture, if you get the full picture. So we hope that those who are able to get a copy and check out our raw translation will get a fuller picture of this little book that elsewhere we've published in the Amharic-only version right here, 
right? This was this was a, a pocket size book right here, right? And so we have these particular two two books right here. All right. So LOJSociety.org, you could check it out on the on the Lulu. But go to our website, there's some free you know, some freebies and everything like that, and some shareables as well. Excuse me. So that's why uh, when I'm talking about this seal. When we talk about the book of the seven seals, when it speaks about the line of Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah, it speaks about the root of David, hath done what has prevailed. And when the fascist invasion of Ethiopia took place, it was at the very time that the uh, that the Metzhoff Kedus was was in the press, the first Halas Selassie Bible, not this present one, which is right here, not this present one. You see the seven seals right there, Metzhoff Kedus, right? While this one was in the press, right? While this one was in the press, that's when the fascists, you understand? Know that's when they chose to. Um, Invade while while the first Hila Selassie first Bible you understand was in the press. All right, so now all these things kind of happening kind of simultaneously, and we hearing about other kind of um, intrigues and, and conspiracies, and even um, on September 11th, 1991, the American president uh, uh, Bush Senior would say it's not about one small country. Most people think he's talking about Jezreel, but he's talking about Ethiopia. You understand? He's speaking about Ethiopia. I mean, look, 9-11, Ethiopia's New Year. We've been saying it. Others have been saying it. And all these truth people, they, they, they just don't find no connection that they can't believe, right, because they don't have a love of the truth. You understand? Just some gimmicks to put out there. Not something really serious and study. You understand? But they're trying to justify their own their own picture, like they're trying to write history in a sense, like make it happen. You can't make it happen. You have to see the revelation of the King of Kings and his Christ. So this is why his proper Hashem and the Adoshem is important, all right? This is, this is one reason why this is very important. So here, so here um, we spoke about how, um, if I have to bring this, down more to size. There's more to this as well, but we might not have the opportunity to get into, you know, get into everything. Okay, let's see if we can bring bring this um bring this down to one two five should be convenient. All right, Th there we go right there. The Hashem. So we have the Hashem. Hashem in Hebrew means a name. Now the Horus name is Rastafari, but first of all, let's go through this. Now, the first part we already touched on, when they say regnal name, they tend to interpret it in a in an in a, in a Anglo-European sense, from England and using the Roman numeral and so forth and so on. But we pointed you to the ancient titles and, and the pre-nomen and the link with Egypt, because the source of the now is to be found in the Tobia or Ethiopia. Alright, so this is the, the full the full, we could say the full name or the full cartouche, if it was a cartouche, this is what must be, it would have been put on it, where it says, Moa Anbesa Ze'im Negeda Yehuda, Kedamawi Haila Selase, Siyuma Egezi Abeher Negusa Negest Ze Ethiopia, right? But here's what we find as we touch on this particular um as we touch on this particular article right here, as we move further down here, right, as we move further down in this particular article here, uh-huh, all right, as we move this right here, the name, okay, this is the first, okay, Teferi, all right, and there's that particular picture, a really wonderful picture, I remember when me and my brother and we, Saw this in uh, was Pinto Cinto Fox's um, book. Um, did we already pass it? I think we already passed it. Let's let's go back up here. Okay, here it goes right here. Now this is wrong on so many levels, but we're gonna try to just summarize why it's wrong, and hopefully maybe somebody will update it. If not, well maybe public embarrassments are in order. Mm-hmm. 
Now, on November, on 2nd of November, 1930, after the death of Empress Zodi II, right, Rastafari Mekonen, um was crowned emperor upon his ascension to emperor. Notice they don't want to say throne. You see, something is really, is really strange with these writers, whoever they may be. Yovas, um, he took, right, as his regnal name, and you see it's this hyperlink, because we already touched on it in part one, um, Haile Selassie, really, Ketamawi Haile Selassie, that's why it's Kahase, we also touched on that in part one, right, um, meaning they say power of the Trinity, but with Ketamawi, the first power, the power that goes before, right, the Trinity, or that, that goes before, right, of the Trinity. Now, Haile Selassie, or Ketamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie first, his full title in office, we also smack that kind of in office kind of thing on the throne of David. See, they don't want to say that because of the, the other Jews and because of their, you know, what they're trying to, um, you know, make believe and make others believe, but was his imperial majesty or is his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie first, conquering line of the tribe of Judah, king of kings, and parentheses, emperor of Ethiopia, elect of God. And they have this all out of order. Mm -hmm. The first part is the line of the tribe of Judah, the conquering line, Moa and Bessus, the Imnegad of Yehuda. Right? Then is his name, right? Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And we showed this before in the, the autobiography, the Amharic autobiography. A couple places is there. The only thing that sometimes might change places is that. Um, officially, more the Yume Gziari here come to for Negus Negeza Ethiopia. Sometimes um, uh, Negus Negeza is that Ethiopia would come before the Yume Gziari here, or elect of God, which really is the link with the Hashem, the elect of God, the Yume Gziari here. So they give you a, a kind of a transcription. They're still using a K with a dot instead of a Q. You understand the letter really is Kedamawi is, is a Q. Right, but because they can't pronounce it well, they make fun of the Ethiopian and the African, South African clicking, you know, like, and they make a fun of it, like South Park and everything. But they can't say it, Yobas, so they don't want you to learn it either, right? So now, this is the main part that we want to focus on, right? This is the main part. Then it says to Ethiopian house lassie, they like to drop out the eye, you know, a whole lot, you know what I mean? Or first, really, it's supposed to be first. But they don't even keep the eye in there. But at least now more, they're putting his name, his full name. And that's in the Selassie I bit. You understand that the Western Gentiles have done. By many names, including John Hoy, Talaku, Mary, Abba, uh, Tickle, and Rastafari. Or Rastafari employ many of these appellations. Um, also referring to him as him, H-I-M, the abbreviation of his imperial majesty, Ja and John Rastafari. Well, give thanks for whoever updated that and put that in as well. So we see, and we've been saving some of the updates over the years. If, if some, we can get all that together, can see how they've been. That will be a little interesting investigation as well. But let's just deal with this part right here, and hopefully we'll be able to produce um, maybe a, a, a fuller written work, you understand, with further evidence and documentation. So the Hashem for I and I is Rastafari, is Kedamawi Haile Selassie. All right, now, here, in comparing it with the root, right, as we go to Egypt, the root, right, you know, uh, remember, Ethiopia is the root of ancient Egypt. This is the part that they always try to take it out. That's why we love ones like Gerald Macy's works, because he was different than those other spiritualists. He recognized the African, the black root, Yopes, and in Ethiopia as that root of the truth throughout his writings. And I was very pleasingly surprised. But anyway, more on that, y'all willing. Now, the Cherui, Cherui is also a name, Horus. They say Horus, but actually when we look at the etymological root of Horus, we find it to be come, come from Gutis, right? come from Gutas, right, as Cherui, Cherui. In fact, um, we probably need to put that in later on when we, when we augment this and, and put in more details right here. So here we see a Serek, a Serek, which contains the name of the, of the jet, 
Now, it's interesting, too, for a lot of these ancient Egypt, and we look at the Sudanese um, languages, indigenous languages, and we look at, um, you know, other, other like the Ottoman languages, and we see a, a definite link with ancient, ancient um, um, Egypt, the roots of a lot of these words, like jet and, and wajet, you understand the proper pronunciation. Now, this is at the Louvre in, in France. They stole this right here. This is more about stolen properties. Right, these are properties that they stole, you know, because we were, you know, scattered around the world. We was under judgment, all right. So they stole these things, right? Now, um, right here, okay. So this is usually the symbol that's used right there, that bird. But when you when you look at that bird, it's like the it's like the alaif, the alaif. You can even see the shape. We don't have one there, but that also needs to be put there. Um, hope you can see it. Now, there's the Nepti, the Nepti names, right? And we saw something very interesting about these Nepti names. Let's see if we can get this in sense a little bit more. The Nepti names, right? There is Negusa Israel. One of the titles of his imperial majesty is King of Israel. The title that he's often attributed that he never took, and for good eschatological, prophetic, um, and even historical reasons, is Lord of Lords. We say that from a spiritual father in the son, the son in the father, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the one God. Yes, that makes sense. But that's more of a, uh, of a revelation, but it's not a testimony to what's on the official, you know what I'm saying, as well as the prophetical. You know what I'm saying? It is prophetical, but that's not one of the official titles, like Lord of Lords. And this is one thing that we try to remind the Rastafari, the brothers and sisters of, and hopefully with study, this will become clearer. You understand? You know, and, and there's a great joy and a delight, because it's still one. It's still one, right? But one of the titles that's often um, suppressed is um, Negusa Israel or Israel Negus. We decided, it, we decided to put it into the, um, in the Gutis form, as most of the title is in the, the, the Gutis form. So let's... Um, Let's just do this right here. Paste this right here. The neck with, okay, no, it's, it's here. Okay, you could turn it, all right. Uh, let's put this in here. All right, so that's even better. All right, so you can see it better. So Negusa Israel, well, there's the Nepti names. Some say the two serpent names, right? The two serpent names, the Nepti names, right? Um, in the Old Testament sense, it would have been Israel and Judah. That's why we call Ethiopia Judah. Many of I and I refer to Ethiopia as Judah. Some don't understand that because they're looking at, you know, um, Revelation 2 and 9 and, and Revelation 3 and 9. But um, according to this, to see how His Majesty's title links with the ancient Egypt title, and remember the source of the Nile is Ethiopia. James Bruce, I think a Freemason or somebody out of Europe, a uh, Scotsman actually, um, he, he traveled and wrote plenty of books and everything that also add much more. Of course, he wrote from his own perspective, but, you know, we can weed through it. We can glean it and find a lot of important information. But the one that reminded us of this is our um, black Hebrew rabbi, right? Um, we say a rabbi in grace, um, um, uh, Wentworth Arthur Matthew of the Commandment Keepers Congregation and his book or the book about him um, by Howard Brooks, the black Jews of Harlem, he even mentions this, that he is, one of his titles is also King of Israel. Now, Israel to, to God or to Yahweh would be, he would be who he be to him was his first wife, right? And, and some would say, oh, no, Israel is his son. It's his son, too, if you understand that and understand the context of that. So we have right here um, uh, just a couple of biblical prophetic scriptures. But first, let's see with the second wife. is Negusa Neges, the king of kings, Ze Ethiopia. Now, if you say, well, why is king of kings? Because remember, of Israel is one nation. There are many nations that, that are within the Ethiopian empire. And some say it's the end of it. No, it's not really. Now it's time for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, the true new world order. You understand? That's what this dispensation is all really about. But the two wives, Israel and Ethiopia, what's our proof, people say? 
What's our evidence? How can you say, some will say that God has a wife. Some religions, you understand, don't believe so. You understand? But yet it was Ethiopia that gave them shelter and refuge. They didn't have really a problem then. Don't think that we are weak now because we are in a state coming out of a, a state of, uh, um, you know, captivity. Because it says he who kills with the sword must be killed by the sword. Must. Not might, maybe, uh, depending on how you feel. No. Must. He who leads into captivity must be led into captivity. And this is where, where some of the Gentiles are not really, you know, fully submitting themselves to the will of God. And they're, you know, I don't want my children to be no slaves. I heard Alex Jones say that. Wow. Really? You, so you should be talking more about it instead of just saying they're talking about it so you don't say they're racist. You know, but it's like, uh, just, just whatever, just throw it out there, right? Just throw it up there. But Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. You say, oh, okay, well, but that's not really saying it's his wife, right? Well, let's, let's go on. Jeremiah 3 and 8, it says, And I saw. When for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. Well, commit adultery? Who did she commit adultery? Who, who was her husband? You know what I'm saying? All right? I had put her away. Put her away? What does that mean? He put her away. You know what I'm saying? So, so who was Israel? How does that connect with um, the lost sheeple? We lost sheeple. Mm-hmm. It connects perfectly. It connects prophetically, but pathetically when, when you allow Reverend um, Bacon and Pastor Pork Chops, you know what I'm saying, to deceive you. You understand? Know it said that there would be um, false shepherds like that already. In Jeremiah 2, actually. Uh, Jeremiah, the, the book of Jeremiah. I think chapter 23, you can start there. Even talk about the dream. If they'll believe the dream, the dream. So you see Martin Lucifer King also get, kind of gets scrolled in there. You understand? Know because he was a Lucifer. He, he, he projected a false light, a false hope. And now we see this false hope makes us like, not just an international, but almost a universal, in a sense, joke. You know? Um, but it says that I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Well, who is saying this in Aramis? In, 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 in the B, Aramis, it is Yahweh. It, actually, it is Adonai. It is the Adoshem, it is Yeshua, you know, the pre-incarnate Yeshua, the Son, who is speaking, right, through the prophets. We know this by the Meserita Hymenot, right, by I and I, what they would call creed in the, in the Latinish, Romanish, English, right? It says, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So, so the tribe of the northern tribe of Israel, the ten tribes, they played the harlot. And when they went into captivity, and, and, and I think 2 Kings chapter 17, we'll see something very interesting, right? It is 2 Kings chapter 17, I believe so. We had touched on an a, a audio, a radio version of that. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where we get these other so-called Jews. That's where the OJs come from. Now, some people say, oh, I take that offensive. Well, you know, the truth is an offense, but check it out. And let's talk about the evidence. And if our evidence is not right, then we admit it. Do you admit that you will, do you bear witness before God and man and all the heavenly hosts that you will do the same? That's the question, right? But let's move forward. Now, here we have um, um, Hosea, which is interesting. Hosea um, actually, it's Hosea, like we say, Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? Y Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, he uh, Yeshua's, his Amo, his people, right? He will save his people. That's why it's Yeshua, not Yahoshua. That's Joshua. He is a New Testament Joshua, but there's a difference in the name. Some folks say it's the book of Yahushua, Yah, 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 so forth and so on, but they're not really studying and showing themselves approved. They are limited by the Masoretic, one particular Torah, Torah of the Jews, the same the Jews or the same type of interpretation that Yeshua, the Moshiach, had rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes and the rest of them because that's when they were scribing down what they began to reason on. They started to write it, these things down, right? So Hosea 2 and 2 says, plead with your mother. 
plead, plead, please, mama, right? For she is not my wife. Uh oh, right? Neither am I her husband. Now some say no, this is just talking about Hosea. No, if you, 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 that's that's poor hermeneutic. You know what I'm saying? Hosea was going through a situation like this as well. Because Adonai said, marry a, a whorish woman. You know, marry a hoe out there. You understand? Because I want to teach you how to be a real prophet so you can understand what I'm feeling. You understand? Um, it's, it's really the understanding. You know, Yahweh's and Adonai's ways are, you know, kind of past finding out. You understand? If you do his will, you begin to know. You get the gnosis, right? Neither am I her husband. Right, so we get the Mohammedans, the Ismailawian, that basically say um, that God doesn't have a wife. Well, what they really mean, but not overstanding with the Ahl Bayt, right? Um, the Ahl Bayt, the people of the book know. You know, the same people that gave them refuge in the Hijra, right? Is that she's not his wife anymore? But many of the Jews who call themselves Jews and others from that time kept going on in that and ignoring. That's why they stay in Torah but not in the prophets, right? Just use it to raise money from careless Christians that don't know the Old Testament because bourbon bacon and pass the pork chops keeps them just in the clock hands thing, in a religious spirit, you understand, and, and counterfeit churches A to Z, right? Now, um, it says, let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight. You understand, out of her sight. And that's interesting. You don't say out of my sight. Get that out of my sight. No, get that out of your own sight, right? And her adulteries from between her breasts. Mm-mm-mm. Yahweh has no, he pulls, he, he, he's straight up. So if you say, we can't talk about sex, right? No, no, no. He, he, there's some other places. We'll get into that another time if y'all wills. Now, we ask a question here. Ethiopia, Yah's new wife? Right? And was the ark, the wedding ring, was the ark symbolic of a wedding ring? Uh, so it came to a covenant, a alakidon, so the covenant of the guests, the queen of Sheba and only son, Minulik, is really telling us. Well, we have this psalm right here. We have Psalm 6831. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands to God, or... Or Mekwanit Kagibit Yuwet Alu, Ethiopia, Mejochua, Mejochuan, what a Giziavi, what a Giziavi had Zergalech, will stretch forth her hands, or her, her, her hands to God. Now, there's a lot of folks who interpret this in different ways, and they try to interpret it down because the clear significance of it. Is, is just so obvious. They say, oh, we don't know what we're talking about. You mean Ethiopia for 3,000, some say 3,600 years, don't know what she's talking about? You know what I'm saying? You're the fool. Also, the Queen of Sheba, the Queen of the South verses in the Bible apply here to the context. That's the fine print right there. And there's the seal from Ethiopia, the kingdom of God. And there's another one which is like to it, except she's wearing white. She, she's getting adorned. And I was... Here, she's between, it's interesting when you understand this from an Egyptic perspective as well, between those two mountains, if you think about it, the pyramid, and, and, this, and this would be like, let me, um, not break it down, but let me explain it a little bit to you so you can understand. We, we've actually had touched on this elsewhere, right? Um, so we have the rainbow, right? The rainbow is a sign of the covenant, right? We have the woman. Right, symbolically the nation, the wife, right? We have the Lion of Judah, right? The Lion of Judah, which is like the Sphinx. Then we have the two pyramids, you know, the pyramids, the two pyramids, all right? And this is like a gateway, you understand, between these two pyramids. And the Lion guards the way. If you are standing in front of the tabernacle, it is like unto. When you look at the tabernacle, right, it's the Lion of Judah, which is that tribe, which is at the gate. You understand, you couldn't get into the tabernacle in the Old Testament time, the Mishkan in the Hebrew, or the, or the Bebta in the Ge'ez, or the um, Dinquan, Bamarinya, without getting past the tribe of Judah. All right? And then if you look straight into it, it's like the one, His Majesty's personal um, throne um, symbol, where you see the two angels in the throne. Now, it's interesting because in ancient Egypt, the woman, right, or Set, she is the throne. That's why she wears a throne on her head, right? And the ark, 
You understand? When we look at the Ark of the Covenant, it is like a throne, but for a, it seems like a smaller size, either one could say a child or a smaller size man. In other words, a man who is roughly His Majesty Ketamawi Haile Selassie's physical um, um, proportion. You understand? So we have the woman there, and then we also have within the, the Ethiopic um, um, Talmud or the, or the Turgum, right, um, we have uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabote Siyam, is, is, is mentioned of in a feminine way as she, and the, and the metaphor, the seminal work of the, of the, tabo, the, the, the tables of law, the tablets of Silat of law, the two of them, and, and the Ark and, and, and the rod of, of Aaron and the, and the pot of manna that is in there as well, and on the side of it is that ceremonial law, or that sacrificial law, you know what I'm saying? It's interesting because this book, um, National Sunday Law, also goes into that as well. Um, some new Christians kind of dispute it, even though they're studying the Hebrew and everything else, um, like uh, what's his name, um, Joseph Prince. Otherwise, other places it's pretty, I mean, if other preachers were even doing that much, it would be good. The people would be much more walking, living in Christ. But anyway, this symbol right here, yeah, um, is very, very, you know, is is very symbolic right here, and we use this in covenant and in grace, but we give the credit to Nabora Id of of Aksum, um, our brother from Ethiopia, classic case, Armias Kabeda Wode Yesus. He was in Ethiopia, kingdom of God. So you know, check them out. So then we put this verse right here from Amos nine and seven, and we have a little series. Uh, that we have done, that we haven't posted up on this verse, because a lot of our black Hebrew Israelite, this this present generation, who are kind of disconnected from ones like Wentworth, Arthur Matthew, the Commandment Keepers congregation, and that testimony from that time, it's like they're not listening to the forefathers. They're doing like Rehobo, uh, Rehoboam, in a sense, right? But Amos 9 and 7 says, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians, the Bene Kushin in the Hebrew, to me, O Bene Israel, O children of Israel, saith Yod Hey Wow Hey, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kir, you understand, or Kir? Now, it doesn't occur to them that it means more than just that the Ethiopians are black people. This is where a lot of our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters are saying that they're just saying that we are black. That's all it's saying. There's more evidence that points to other things that we need not um, neglect. You understand? Because we need to understand how it connects, you know, so we can overcome. And this is the reason why one's just kind of um, going around the same old mountains in the wilderness because they're not finding the gate. You see, there's a gateway, you know, you know, but you have to, it's a line of Judah, you understand? It's a line of Judah that's at that gate, and you got to recognize, you understand? You can't be making up, you understand, drawing a picture of what Christ is going to look like on the throne, and we already done see his majesty on the throne. That's the fulfillment of what Christ prophesied to us, you understand? So we got counterfeit kind of Christian eschatology out there, or false prophecy, but they call it eschatology. You understand, which is a fancy way of saying the same. So the children of Israel, we said this, we actually went through this kind of in more detail in the three-part video series on children of Ethiopia, of the Ethiopians equal children of Israel. Um, the children of Israel is in the secondary position, if you understand, if you have, if you have any reading comprehension. You know, it was like if you had two wives, I like this as a two-wives scenario. Right, you have two wives. Remember what the Lord says in in the Scripture: If you have one wife who is who is hated, right, and one wife who is loved, and and then with the two children, so forth and so on, what does Yahweh says? You still he still does for that wife that maybe he did not like or he hated because of the adultery. You understand? Know he still recognizes if if she recognizes, the children recognize, right? So the children of Israel are in the secondary position. And they are compared and are um, to liken themselves to the faithful children of the Ethiopians. In a sense, we can also liken ourselves to the careless ones, but they should have also likened themselves to us and learned from our bitter 
400 plus year experience. But now the children of the Ethiopians are now in the primary position, thus the African Zion, the African Zion, to both Yah and to David on the root of David, i.e., the lion of the tribe of Judah, Moa Andesa, Ze'em Negeda Yehuda, Kedamawi, Haila Salase. Now, we, we, we added this in our quick notes right here. Um, David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David. And David II renewed the kingdom of his grandfather, David I, in the highlands of Ethiopia. We could have gone on and say, well, this is Minulik, Minulik or Bainalechem. He also had many names, right? Um, now, this was kind of connected with it in doing our search. Do not sell or divide Ethiopian land, Shashamani in particular, and Badaman. These are warning verses. You know what I'm saying? As well as to some of the Gentiles, too. And we have to, you know, make this noted that they have a place in our father's house, but don't try to, you know, you know, don't try to do what your forefathers did. You know what I'm saying? It, it barely worked then and definitely not going to work now. Right? Now, Amos 7 and 17 says, Therefore, thus saith yod hey wow hey thy wife shall be in harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword. Wow. And thy land shall be divided by line. Wow. And thou shalt die in a polluted land. You know, that's one prayer that we all should have, that we don't perish, die in a polluted land. You know what I'm saying? And Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of this land. So we see the same thing kind of happening to the Keolis Ethiopians too, in that sense. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost shocking that people try to pretend like they don't see it. So that was, that was actually some of, the, some of the notes on the two wives, right, or, or the two wives. And let's just go right here just once again so you can understand what we're speaking of right here. We're speaking of the other, the other name of, of, of Ethiopic and even ancient Egyptian kings, right? And for the king of kings, he is both king of Israel in the singular sense, and Yeshua HaMoshiach is the Lord. He is the governor, right? Negusa Negesa, Ethiopia, he's the king of kings of Ethiopia because there's many nations in the Ethiopian family, the Tigra nation, the Oromo nation, the Amhara nation, the Afar nation, and, 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 and if I didn't name your tribe, Sidamo, and I mean, why, I mean, no disrespect whatsoever, but how much respect or honor do you have for the king of kings? That's the real question right there. Let's go on and just, and just cover this right here. We have the Horus of Gold name, right, the Horus of Gold name. Moa Andesa, the Im Negeda Yehuda. Now, on some of the additional notes, it talks why, that, you know, what the Horus of gold is, is something that is, you know, how gold is a noble element, right? And gold is also a, a, a royal element. But from the ancient Egyptian mythos, it's the whole Horus, the Cherui, you understand, versus um, Sut, or, or really Shet, right? Shet. You understand, which actually means the buttocks. It's, it don't, in the ancient Hebrew, it's not talking about Sate or Seth of the Bible. It, it was, though there's a similarity in its root and everything. Now, Bama Rinya, and from, the, from even some of the, the um, older Amharic, Sate means woman in that sense, which is kind of interesting as well. But we'll get into that. But the Moa and Bessazem Negeda Yehuda is the Horus of Gold, or the Cherui, or the golden chosen name. He is the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. All right? Um, strange how people would say some prophecies fulfill themselves around that time, but they haven't seen his majesty in it. That's when they have to spiritualize Christ, that he is someone we don't see him, but right here it says that these things will go on on earth, not in heaven. You understand? Know it's speaking on earth when it's talking about the line of the tribe of Judah. All right? All um, right? Anyway, the personal name or the nomen, remember the phenomena that they talked about might happen? Phi nomenon, the nomen and the phi nomen or the phi nomenon, the personal name. Teferi, teferi, linked Kabbalistically to the Tiferet. Or 
this personal name, when it's expanded or in full, it's Lij Teferi Mekonin or Mekonin, right? Now the throne name, as we've already touched on already, is right here. Let's just bring this as the throne name, right? Or the pray nomen, Moan Besazem Negeri Yehuda, Kedamawi Chayla Salase, Siyume Egeziavihe, Negusa Neges, Ze Ethiopia. Yeah, all right, let's bring this down now. Um, this was, this was the, the blow up of, of what we went through from the Wikipedia page. Right, very irregular right here. Right, kind of garbled on a certain level. You understand? Um, it, it, it has some truth there, but they put this odd say, this odd say, and we've gone into that on a, on the older video. So one to want to see more on that. Why not, or why shouldn't it be odd say? You understand? Not not as much as like every time they they they, they mention they'll t they'll put it between Kedamawi. You understand? Because there's a significance to the fact that his name is Kedamawi Haila Salase. And they're trying to kind of like, you know, rewrite yeah, rewrite, exactly, rewrite history. Especially how they, how they, how they put it in right here. I, I think if I, I'll check some of the speeches in them hard. I know it comes in sometimes in, 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 in those areas, but still it's not the official stamp. It's not the royal stamp. And when we look at the, the seal, you know, it's not the machten, right? So they're trying to deny the seal. So we, 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 we did this right here as a kind of a summary to ourselves and to others that the careless Ethiopian transcribers, they have problems, right? Some of the problems is, well, not, not the personal problem. They could take it to the Lord in prayer, take it to Adonai, the black Lord and Savior, Shuha Mashiach in prayer. The personal problem, but the problems here, you understand that we have with them concerning the Hashem is that they use the wrong fidels, and, and we demonstrated that on the man of the millennium um, 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 cover art and stuff like that. Though we think that the, the work itself was a, a quite honorable work, but here there's an hard literacy problem, right, um, as well as wrong order. There's a wrong order. That's where it's kind of like garble. And thirdly, additional titles Right, veer, I'd say. Mm -hmm. They have an I'd say habit. And I ask the question whether it's Tigrayan, because if you know some of the Tigrayan northern rulers use I'd say, right? Showing rulers usually did not use I'd say in their, in their title. You understand? Um, but there's an the ancient link of I'd say too, with ancient Egypt, which is interesting. Go, go find it. Now, um, Lastly, but not leastly, on the Shem of God, or the Siyume Egeziavihir. We've touched on this elsewhere, but Siyume is the full of name, the full, the full ancient. In other words, we have the Hebrew Shem, which is actually contracted from the Shiyum, right? Shiyum, which means to be appointed, really to be named. Literally in the good is Shiyum. You understand? Or we have Siyum. They say Siyum, but with the right um Negusul se as in Salase in in the gut is the true gut is it was more syllabated, so more of a like a right almost almost to the level of a sh like shiyun. That's why we have the word shum and shume. Mm hmm Even though it's written with a different fidel because this is where it was taken up. You know what I'm saying? This is where it was taken up into, um, let's make this a little larger, where it was taken up into the Amharic during the times of purification, right? During the times of purification. Let's, let's bring everything to one order of, uh, of Amharic feet out right there. Okay, this is, this is a, little bit, a little bit more. So we have the Hashem and the Adoshem. We say Adoshems, right? Because even scripturally, you'll see this, and there's a, it's not, it's not just, just, you know, it's not just randomly that you see some places where you have Jesus Christos or Jesus Christ, and other places you have Christ, Jesus. The unfortunate thing is, your, maybe your pastor and your preachers haven't learned it or have chosen not to teach you it because a lot of ones have crept into the church unawares. You know, they've had the Bible, 
they haven't read the Bible or recognized the sacrifice of so many people, right? So many Christian people, Gentile and, and Hebrew, and in and, and, and preserving the scriptures. So ones have Bibles, like they go to church carrying their Bibles, maybe read a verse or two. Don't give them too much more than that, you understand? Otherwise they get a headache. You know, and then therefore they're unarmed and therefore it's very easy for Decepticons, right, to come like wolves in sheep clothing and confuse people. So some of this might be new for some, in a sense. You know what I mean? And you really should have been told this already, you know, by your pastor, your preacher. If you ask them, Oh, is this true or not? They they if they're honest, they'll tell you they don't really know. You know, but most of them are probably not going to say that because you might say you're the pastor, the preacher. You know, I put my family, my life, my spiritual life in your hand, and you, you are ignoramus. That's what happens in the church of the Laodiceans in the last church age. That's exactly what happened. That's why the scripture says, study and show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly explaining the word of truth. So the Hashem, right, is the the... QHS or the Kedamawi Haila Selase, right? And it's a Q is the proper letter. Now, we've been trying to show some the brothers and sisters, but some of them like to do the K because they see the K elsewhere. Then when they see folks start to update the K, because since I've been seeing Ethiopians write their name, they're writing it more, I would say, correctly according to the science, if we can call it that of the English language, you know, the phonetics and all of that, right? But anyway, Kedamawi Haila and we use this spelling, the two L's is how His Majesty would spell it in all official documentation. You understand? Although there's other documentation that usually you'll find it when one's at least like in the West where they have the full name and one L. But in most official documentation translated by the Imperial Press, you understand, we find it spelled like this in the um, in the Roman, the Latin, the Latin letters. All right? So, um, also, there's Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. They say the father of modern Africa. Well, it's really deeper than that. He's the father of the righteous Africans and the righteous modern Africa. You know what I'm You can't put that mess there. You understand that's going on under Nisus Magic. After all, it was a creeping coup. You know what I'm saying? You, you tried to exile God. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Godfather, if you please. Now, Abba Kedus, this will be more correct right there, you understand, but it's also spelt like this, you know, with the K, right, D-D-U-S. For those who post videos, we'll, we kind of use both of those, so when people are searching, they still are under the old right now. So, in grace, my brothers and sisters, the Hashem actually equals Siyume, Siyume, Shiyume, Egeziyadiher. Now, Literally, people will say that means the elect of God, but it really means appointed. If you look in the good is, when, as this is the order of Melchizedek, the word order in the Old Testament, the Belui Kidan, is um, Siyum. Siyum. You understand? It's Siyum. Like, like Siyum Melchizedek. Right? The order of Melchizedek. But really, literally, it means Shum, Shome, like they had the hour of appointment, Shum Shah. Shum, like appointed, shir, is like disappointment, appointment and disappointments. You know, when folks wasn't doing their job, they would, you know, get the motor or put in another ministry or, if not, you know, maybe send home. You know, so this means appointed. So when we look at Shem, right, and Hebrew is an Afro-Shemitic language. That also needs to be noted. Hebrew in, it, in and of itself is Afro-Shemitic. We say that the proper translation more will be the Shem of God or the Shem of the Sustainer. In fact, um, we, we, we try to stop doing this bow gag thing. You understand? Still, we, we, we have to use that um, Sustainer, right? Because that would be a, a more better one-word translation, right? And then put some quotation marks around this one right here and some space. You know, for grace, right? So the Shem of the Sustainer, the Shem, right? The name, right? Or the one named of. It, you know, it has this theological kind of um, interpretation. Ones might say, well, well, he is not God in that sense of being the, 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 
the divinity fully manifest because our eyes would burn out. You understand? But he is that man child that was snatched up to God. And what is God? According to scripture, he is spirit and that spirit of truth. And he reproved the world because of those things that John's gospel already disclosed to us. So that's a brief of the Hashem. The Adoshem, right? The Adoshem is Iesus or Yeshua. We've been trying to study this too because some folks say it's not, it's, 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 um, it's Yah, Yahasha, Yahashawa, or something like that. Some say um, Yahoshua, and some say, oh, there's no ho in it, being really silly. You understand? Because the word ho in Hebrew is different than ho. You know what I'm saying? But some say we say Yahushua. Those are English kind of Gentile kind of mentality folks right there. They have the Gentile mentality disorder. You um, So it's kind of hard because they, they, they're trying to make it a Western thing, but it's not. The light comes from the east and shines to the west, right? So Iesus is where it comes from the Coptic Greek, right, or the Coptic that later on would become the Greek, right? So we have Iusus or Iesus, which was the best that they could do, Iesu, right, the best that they could do from Yeshua, and it was actually pretty good if you know language, if you, if you understand what's really at stake. Most folks don't understand this, you understand? In, in fact, um, in, in the Greek, it, the Y would not be there because they don't have a Y. This is from the, the Shoen Amharic and the Royal Amharic. Or as we have here, Geta, Jesus Christos, because Geta, Jesus Christos, 